I come from this area. I did, I've lived and worked most of my life in South Auckland. Um, so I'm pretty honoured to be able to stand in the Port Waikato electorate and um, standing for New Zealand first because um, it's a party I believe in and they have fought strongly on the um, issue that's close to my heart, which is um, every New Zealand is equal before the law. The proudest thing to me was getting into the police. I, I, I was really proud of being able to achieve that. Um, being voted as vice, vice president of the New Zealand Police Association, I was the first female to be put into a position like that. And But it wasn't just, it, it wasn't that I felt that I was being elected as a token. We didn't have diversity back then. We just, you know, you put your hand up and you got the job done. But it was the fact that I was elected by my peers, um, you know, and that, that meant a lot to me. That was, that was really shocking. And that's another one of those things where I thought, you know, I, I can't complain about things not going right if I'm not prepared to put my money where my mouth is. Um, my kids, I'm incredibly proud of my kids. Um, they are great people and I think I'm a, I'm a lucky mum because I actually like hanging out with my kids. They're my best friends and, and I think I'm pretty lucky to have that. Um, my work with Hobson's Pledge, um, I'm really proud of that. People have criticised the organisation without knowing what we stand for and what we believe in. And, and I've, I've spent you know, seven years saying that we need to be treated equally. We have to focus on outcomes. Um, I haven't changed that argument and I would stand by what, I've, what I said in 2016 in my first speech to what I say now. Um, we, we have to come together as a nation. We cannot allow this division to continue um, to move forward. And so when I left Hobson's Pledge, you know, we, we had a, an organisation that had survived the test of time. A lot of lobby groups don't, and I was really proud of what we've achieved um, and that we've made people have a conversation. Um, you know, New Zealand First was the only one having that conversation and um, about equality, a, a, about those equal rights things. No other political party would touch that topic. And um, now that it's, you know, after all this hard work, um, they're all starting to come on board and saying it, but New Zealand first was saying it first and standing up for it first. And, um, and that's integrity to me, that means a lot. And, and I suppose the, 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 my next proudest moment was that, you know, I'm, I was nominated to be a candidate for New Zealand first, and I'm really proud of that. It, it's concerning to me that when you tell young people that we expect less of you, that we we don't think you can do it on your own, that that you know you you deprive them of their belief, their opportunity to succeed. But more importantly, you, you're 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 basically saying you sit back and wait, we'll bring stuff to you, rather than you know step up. Um, encourage you to succeed and more and more Māori leaders that are, are speaking out are starting their conversation with the idea that you know Māori are failing. We're not failing. There are some that need help definitely, absolutely, but there's some in all ethnicities of New Zealand that need help and that's what government should be doing, focusing on need and, and not predicating every discussion on what your ancestry is or what your ethnicity is. It's, it's got to be about outcomes, and, and we're not focusing on that. New Zealand First, to me, stood for New Zealanders. And, you know, I've known Winston, I've been on the periphery of, of his career for a long time, and he, he can say it better than anyone, because I know where he came from, I know what his backstory is. Um, my, my mother went to school with his family, you know, with his sisters, um, you know, they, that, that's the story we need to be telling our young people. And, and that was a big part of that sense that we can do it. And nobody should be telling our young people that um, you're failing. And when we focus all our energies on the small group that are in help, needing help, and we're not focusing on the majority that are, are capable of achieving amazing things and are achieving amazing things, we're ignoring it. We're, we're not setting aspiration. Um, we're robbing them of opportunity and we've got to do better. And every single New Zealander 
should be afforded the same opportunity. We can't guarantee outcome, but we can afford opportunity, and that's, that's what this is about. One of the things that I've really learnt from my working life is that when you train as a detective, and I've, I've, I've learnt under some amazing detectives in the police, you learn to find answers, you learn to dig, and never stop digging until you get to the truth. You never accept things on face value. You keep asking and you keep digging. And that's what I think isn't happening. We're not getting real answers. Um, you don't accept what some bureaucrat walks into your office and says, this is the way it is. You find the answers, you talk to the people, you get to the truth. And, and that's the part that I think I bring. And, and I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteed that I don't think you'll find anyone that'll work harder. And because I think we're, we're a great country and we're missing out because we're not prepared to actually you know, find the right answers and find the better solutions. The issues that we're seeing at the moment is that we are group thinking, we're putting people into boxes and keeping them there. And New Zealand First is really talking about what is the common ground, what is, what is the unifying issues, cost of living, really fundamental things around freedom and democracy. The stuff that we all believe in um, that we're losing, you know, and, and, and that's the part that New Zealand First is doing well. You know, whether you're Māori or um, a new immigrant to New Zealand or born here from generations, we all want a good cost of living. We all want good affordable housing. We want first world jobs. We want really good health systems. We all want it. So let's focus on what we all want and get those working, the fundamentals working and not worry about all the stuff that's distracting us from moving forward together. Winston is, um, <laughs> he's, a, he's amazing. He's, he, he has, um, he's proven that he's, he really is what a leader is. People want to get to know him, they want to work with him. Um, he, will, he will stand up and speak when no one else will, will say what needs to be said. He's not afraid of the fight. Um, and I, I, I always go to that, you know, that idea of, you know, who would you follow into war? And, and I look around the room and, you know, I, I think most people would, and if you get to know them. But, you know, that, that's what you need. Someone who, who's, who, who's strong of character, who isn't afraid of the fight. And um, yeah, I, I admire him. And I admire him because I know where he came from and, and he stood true on that. Um, he's, he's strong strong beliefs and strong principles, and I, I admire that. I'm Casey Costello. I'm the candidate for Port Waikato for New Zealand First.